power you're wielding. You need to hand this technology over to Monarch. I've prepared for what happens next. You say you're prepared, but no part of this plan of yours involves stopping it from happening. Even if I fix William's machine, what could you possibly hope to achieve? The end of time is coming. There's no way to- Hey! This isn't a debate. I just watched a ship fast forward through a fucking bridge. Time is running out, and the fracture's getting worse by the minute. And it cannot be stopped. Paul has been to the end of time. He's witnessed it firsthand. Can't you see? We prepared for what's next out of necessity. Your research is based on work by William Joyce. You respected him. He knew that the fracture would occur, but he also knew that it could be fixed. Will built a way to stop the fracture. This. The countermeasure. We're traveling to the past to retrieve it. You can help us get there faster. Or... You can agree to disagree. <laughs> I'll have to run diagnostics on the machine. I can't promise anything before that. Amy, take Amaral to the machine. Keep an eye on her. Sure thing. Okay, doctor, let's go. And I can see right through you. Don't try anything stupid. You will regret it. Okay, I guess me and Beth have a heart to heart Jack, now. Before we head downstairs, we have to talk about something. I figured as much. Uh, before we talk, though, my dear, I want to. I want to look at what's on the wall in case it doesn't let me do it later. Hatch. This is the guy that visited me in the cell. Hmm. Sounds like Serene's on to him. According to Monarch Communications, Hatch sabotaged a Monarch lab. He may be undermining Paul, but I get the impression he's not on our side. Uh, she's got all this, this stuff here about Hatch. I don't need to go through that, though. Twelve? Wow. Eleven more uh, narrative objects, huh? And there's something through here, too. Which I guess I can't get to until I talk to her, right? So let's do that now. Or actually, she's got something on the on the table here. Okay, what's up? It's about the plan. If Amaral gets the machine working... We go back to yesterday and undo all of this. Listen, in the video Will left for me, he said the countermeasure was stolen from his workshop on July 4th, 2010. He also said I took it. Maybe I did, Jack. We have a time machine. You're saying we go to 2010. We steal it. If Will was right, that would mean it wouldn't be a change. We take the countermeasure, bring it to the present, fix the fracture, save the world. Okay. Kill the cheerleader? Explain to uh, me why that's not. a better plan than just going back to yesterday and preventing all this from happening in the first place. Because I'm afraid that based on what I know about time travel, we can't change anything. The past has already happened. We can't change it. But my way, we don't have to. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, my plan still feels simpler. Let's just get the machine working. No, dude, I mean, seriously, if this is just one timeline and not a multiverse, then, then yeah, she's already done this, so complaining with her is not really worth the effort. Now, can I, can I read this thing? You gonna let me? Oh, I gotta stand on that side. Uh, Beth's 2010 plan. Uh, okay. It doesn't tell me much. Alrighty then, so we got more narrative objects to grab, which we know there's a few through here. So we all shall do that. Also a, a radio. Hello, Riverport. Well, it's been a rough night for us. The collision at the Port Donnelly Bridge that has claimed multiple lives is still being investigated. And they're talking about the bridge. And she has more to say. Dr. Amaral seems convinced that Paul's been to the end of time. Do you think that's true? Can't be. Otherwise, trying to prevent it would be pointless. Why? Because it's already happened. Yeah, see, 
Yeah, that's the problem with having a single timeline, is that that's uh, kind of true and kind of not, sort of. But anyway, uh, let's go way through here. Merle's doing with the time machine. Yeah. And I don't think we can trust her. The way she looked at the countermeasure, like she's seen it before, she knows what it does. You think Will told her about it? No. Will was never the kind to open up. I can relate. Will takes it to the next level. When we were kids, the only way that Will could express anything important to me was by informing my stuffed giraffe when I was in the room. <laughs> well, that's actually pretty hilarious. As sad as that is, that's actually pretty hilarious. Well, Mr. Giraffe, what have we been up to today? Oh, I don't know. I've just been making a time machine. And I can't tell anybody about it, but I can tell you because you're a stuffed animal and nobody cares about you. <laughs> you will survive the end of time. Everybody else will die. Well, not quite die, but they'll just be frozen forever. And, uh, and, but you, you, you are frozen already. <laughs> so you don't care. <laughs> uh, I love it. Yeah, there's gotta be something. I saw a little thing flickering over there. I guess I gotta go through to the other room to get to it. There's gotta be something else over here. I just feel it. I feel it in my bones. You no, know, that's just, that just takes me right back where I was. Well, well, hell, game. Well, hell. See. Did she find anything? I'm not sure. I'll go check. Do, 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 do. Okay, we've got things over Jack, here. You've got to see this. I've got to see a lot of things, Amy. That's one of those things, I guess. All right. Hey, shouldn't you be keeping an eye on Amaral? Okay, but first, you need to check out the intel I uncovered. All right. Well, well, let me let me do it. All right, what is all this? I uploaded all the files I stole on that USB stick from the Dr. Monarch Security Ramon Station. Too. I also found a video of your brother. It's on that TV. You're gonna wanna see it. Everything else I printed out and put on tables over there. Okay, so we're not we're not going high tech on it though. We're just gonna we're just gonna print out the stuff, huh? Uh, do you have you have something else to say? What's on the computer? Monarch files I uploaded, and I kept the juiciest stuff on screen for you. Oh, well, thanks. Uh, from Sophia to Manuel Porietta, dream uh, journal number five. I'm attaching Paul Serene's most recent entry in his dream journal. I am growing increasingly concerned with the meaning behind these dreams, but I need a second opinion. I can treat Paul's sickness, really, as far as I can determine. The Cronon syndrome is more a metaphysical condition than an actual medical issue, but I am a physicist. I'm very much out of my depth with all this. Uh, this exercise was meant to to help alleviate stress to ease Paul's symptoms, but so far it has resulted in the opposite. Time's of the essence, his condition is getting worse by the day. My fifth entry. I recall moving through a wheat field that once belonged to my grandparents. I pressed the wheat stalks to the side with my hands, softly sifting through them at first. But as I pressed forward, the stalks began to warp and curl around my arms, providing resistance to my every move. The entire field began to solidify into an unbreakable material with my body entangled in a mess. I desperately tried to pull myself free, but every movement led to a burning sensation. The world desaturated. Time stopped. I heard the unmistakable sound of my greatest fear approaching. Shifters. They emerged from all sides, surrounding me. I looked into the distance and saw a blurry figure approaching. He tried to yell, but the words could, wouldn't escape his throat. Instead, transforming into an endless shriek pulsing through my ears. His every movement and sound transformed into an agonizing discomfort, all unbearable. The pain triumph the pain trumped logic. I needed to make it stop. I needed to make it all stop. I grew violent, blindly lashing out the figure, tearing it apart. I needed to destroy the source of motion and sound that caused me such discomfort. The pain stopped as I took the figure's life, and as he died, his identity became clear. It was me. I had become the very threat that I had once feared, but I did not fear any more. I felt something very clear, very pure. I turned around and discovered Jack behind me. He didn't move, but I could somehow understand his intent. He welcomed me. Every misunderstanding, all the pain we had caused one another was forgotten. We were part of a higher consciousness. I heard a voice behind me, Dr. Kim. He joined us. 
told me that time was once the fire in which we burned. You told me we would burn no more. Time is the fire upon which we burn. Sorry, I was trying to do a Malcolm McDowell <laughs> from Star Trek, Star Trek Generations. Uh, okay, and that's still the same thing. Okay, and then the TV. Okay, the date is. Uh, the date is. It's. It's February twenty eighth. Jesus, Will. William Joyce. Nineteen ninety nine. After months First experiment. of arduous work, my machine is finally ready human testing. Ready is defined by me since ready is obviously a relative term when you're dealing with the deformation of the chronon field and recreating of black holes mass density by tangent. Okay, in short summary, I built a time machine and it works. I'm gonna prove it or die. Okay, just need to make some final preparations. When I enter the machine, I will travel clockwise around the corridor. Okay. Core is active. Chronon levels are stable. Travel clockwise around the corridor, exiting back into the same location in the near future. Oh. This clock is set to my watch. Now, when I exit the machine, there should be a significant difference in time between my watch and the clock in this room. Corridor is locked in place. Okay. Setting the date to five minutes to the future for the first test. Now, admittedly, traveling to the past would be much more impressive. But I can't travel backwards in time, only as far as the first activation of the machine's core, which is, well, now. Okay. Machine's ready. Monitor is stable. What I'm about to do is going to change the very fabric of Well, that was weird. Well, he certainly didn't die then. Uh, but he must have gotten hit or something. Wow, that's really strange. Okay, so something went wrong the first time around, I guess. And... Huh. So it wasn't... Uh, I, and that's what I'm gathering, is that it wasn't a, a success the first time around. Maybe he had the same problem. Is that a dog over there? Maybe he had the same problem that's... No use going there before talking to Dr. Amaral. Oh, okay. You're going to force me to... Force me to take a linear path here. All right. Um, what else? Uh, I guess we'll go talk to Amaral then. You should be over this other side, I guess. reach the other side of the machine through here. Well, I'm already going around the long way. So, sorry about that. Oh, oh, there's something here. Jack. Hi. It's Will. I... I guess you're in Thailand by now. I'm not sure if you even still use this number. I don't like how we left things. I'm... I've been under a lot of pressure. There's some things I should tell you. I'd like to make it right. Just call me, okay? Please. Hmm. Okay. So that's something. And then anything else around here? So did he call me back? Or did Paul? I thought Paul was the one that called me back to here. So I must not have gotten that message that he left or something. Oop, there is a... Oh, yeah, we got a Cronon source over here. We got, a, got ourselves a Cronon source over this area. One of three, huh? Okay. Gotta keep an eye out for it. Don't look like there's any more over here, though. Here's Amaral. Is there anything else on this side? Before I talk to her? No, it doesn't look like it. How's it look? 
The problem is quite simple, really. The power relay is down. You'll need to find a way to reset it up. There, where the light is. I'll lower the ladder for you. What happened to the power relay? A power surge occurred at 7 a.m. this morning when the machine was activated. Sabotage? 7 a.m.? That's hours before we even got here. Well, the numbers don't lie. Okay, I guess I'm doing some climbing. Sure. Saves me from volunteering. Hmm, interesting. That sounds like it would be a case of sabotage. Like someone coming here to try to stop us from being able to use the machine right away. But I guess that was to set in motion all the things, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. But we'll go and X this. Okay. The console here's got two red lights, one green one. You'll have to reset the power to the two stations with the red lights before activating the relay. Both stations are located above the machine. Just follow the cables to the red lights. Above the machine. The perfect place for a reset switch, Will. <laughs> Great. So I'm going to go up there. Uh, how to jump on top of stuff? Is that what I got to do? I assume that there's... Oh, you know what? That's probably what I have to... That's probably the... Uh, the doorway I had to go through on the other side. Probably some stairs there. That's why it said, you gotta talk to Amaral first, because you can't just walk in there without a without an objective. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Alrighty then. That's what we'll do. Although it says toilets here, but I guess I guess it's more than that. Alrighty then. So there are some things in here. Yeah, it is a it's like a little Oh, that's the that's the giraffe. That's the giraffe he was talking about. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> what is it? This is all my stuff from our family home. I kept everything. Hmm. Guess he thought you might come back. Well, he was right, sort of. Did I look at all those things over there? Because I'm seeing more stuff that's showing up now. Oh no, this is all the stuff that she said to look at. All the stuff she had printed out and laid out. Okay, I had walked I had walked right by it. What is this? Serene's original manifesto for Monarch. Phase one, building an empire. Phase two, preparing for the future, and phase three, a lifeboat protocol. They actually believe all this bullshit. More than you can imagine. Huh. Alright. So general end of the world preparation stuff. Monarch Mission Statement 1999. Uh, seeing the path ahead. Work under my guiding vision of future. Expand. Influence. Develop science and technology. Blah, blah, blah. Of course they won't fail because he knows exactly what's going to what's gonna happen. The lifeboat. Yeah. Well, according to Monarch Communications, Paul Serene just activated that thing. Far sooner than they were supposed to. What does that mean? In Zero State, however, spoilage becomes a non-issue. Everything stored outside the shatterproofed area remains in perfect condition. This advantage doesn't only apply to uh, comestibles, but also makes the storage of medicine, volatile chemicals. Oh, so that's pretty cool. So that's really cool that somebody went through and, and wrote this up. It's like um, basically, you know, inside the stutterproof room, uh, everybody's walking around and everything's great. But outside is where they would store this all the uh, perishables and stuff because it's time is frozen so it's not going to spoil and so you just have somebody wearing those backpacks go out and, and retrieve the stuff and bring it back into the stutter area stutter proof area so that everybody can can eat it and all that stuff that's that's really cool I like it I like I, I like somebody actually went and, and thought this thing through and put all that to into the game that's that's really cool stuff I, that's it's the only thing that keeps me playing this game right now is the story in this is really awesome. Anybody here we can trust? Fiona. She's my only remaining contact on the inside. 
What about this Burke guy? He was under arrest in the same transport as me. Jerry's still out on Burke. Yeah, Burke, Fiona, and Wincott, these are the guys that we see most of in the uh, live action stuff. So, there you go. Charlie Wincott is the one that's the hacker guy, hacker geek guy that's constantly pissing people off. Liam is the, uh, the, the fixer, as they say. Fiona is the is a Crodon researcher, but she's basically uh, the one helping helping out, trying to get into the areas, helping Beth at, Beth out. Lifeboat documents can't directly control the city. We don't have the manpower. We don't have the actual authority. It's therefore vital we made it. A good relationship with the media and the local authorities. Uh, situation is not stable. Maintain control. Power structures. Minimize conflict. Uh, and all that stuff. Okay. All right. So they were like a power, power police group, sort of. Hey, Amy. What am I looking at here? I've been recording Monarch communications with the radio that Beth left me. I made a compilation of anything that seemed like it might be useful. Okay, transcript of Monarch Communications. Uh, first Aid 1. Okay, so it's just basically tie things up. Gibson doesn't have backup. Yeah, all right. Let's, that's when they were going after Burke. All right. Okay, fine. So all that is all that is taken care of now. Now I can get back to where we were since I completely walked by that the last time. And now we can come back into here. And we'll talk to Beth, I guess. Let's look at this. Jack? You okay? Yeah. This is going to have a picture of him and Jack. Or of him and, and the other guy. <laughs> William. Yeah, him and William. And then uh, we just have there's something over there. What does she have to say for herself? <laughs> My artsy rebel phase. Complete with a very rebellious how-to guide. What? I always what wanted to holding? try this, actually. Never had the time. What is she holding? Uh... Siege of the... I can't see it. It's, I think it says Fable. But I can't, I can't make it out. She keeps, keeps moving it around. I can't see it. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Can't, I can't tell. She keeps moving, moving it around. I can't tell what it is. Yeah, it's, it's almost incomprehensible. I guess it's, it's like a D and D thing. I guess maybe. I don't know. I can't, I can't really make it out. There's something over here, though, before we go through that door. Is that... Do I get through it through this way? No, I gotta go through that door. Okay. Alright, just making sure. Just making sure we don't leave anything behind. Plus, you know, Cronon sources and all that stuff. We've got two more to grab. What's wrong? Toto. my signature. You made this? I've never even been here before. That woman in the picture is you, isn't it? So... Jack. There's something you should know. 1999. I was eight years old, playing in my backyard, and a woman approached me, told me she was from the future. She gave me very specific details of events that would come to pass. She gave me this. Filled with dates, events, proof of it all. Jack, that woman. It was you. Everything I told myself would happen, did. Every detail, for better or worse, came to pass and couldn't be changed. Our fate is laid out before us, Jack. Everything that happened to get us here, every sacrifice that was made, they're all a part of this path. And they can't be changed or undone. Beth. When we step in that time machine, you will see for yourself. So 
So it's Beth that's been going around the city making these right. murals? If you're that sure about how all this works, we can try it your way. Wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that is rather cool. Yes, I know that there's a, a thing over here to to be gathered. Uh, somewhere. Where are you at? Where are you at, thing to be gathered? You're, you're here, definitely. I can't, uh, why can't I get in there? Why can't I get in there to grab it? Let's look at this again, I guess. It's her. She's the one who's been painting all over the city. <sighs> Jesus. Yep. Painting it so that I would see it. That is, that is, that is awesome. I thought, you know, I thought he was just, uh, hallucinating, but no, he's, he's, those were actual things. Uh, Sicilian pizza. But she said she was never in here, but I guess she... I guess this Beth wasn't... She doesn't remember. That's weird. How do I get over to that thing? Notebook was full of dates, events that would come to pass, instructions. Her entire existence was formed out of those pages. Be transferred to another school. She pushed a, pushed a boy down the steps. Uh, you'll hope things will get better. They won't. It's going to be a difficult year. Uh, 16 years from now, Derek will be working at a dollar store. He still lives with his mom. <laughs> uh, the next door will pass away. The kids at school will steal your jacket. Your parents will claim that you're hiding it on purpose, that they will buy you a new one. Look in the bin on the corner of 3rd and Main. You'll find something that will get you through the winter. You'll be teased for wearing it by Michelle. You'll fight back, but it will only make things worse. Eventually, when you are able to contain your anger, take her aside Say the following to her. I'm sorry about your mom. Then give her a hug. She'll push you away. She will look incredibly confused, vulnerable. She'll never tease you again. Uh, 2001. Erica will break her arm. Having read this, you'll do everything in your power to prevent this. The actions you take will avoid this happening. will only make it so. This is the first time you'll truly witness that your fate is already determined. It cannot be changed. Uh, she'll blame you for the incident. Try not to take this to heart. Uh, she wasn't the friend you thought she was. Stay strong. Oh my god, she's like laid it all out. Uh, cause time to break down, know your enemy, uh, blend in, train daily. Wow, wow, that is awesome. Holy crap, that is really good. Hey, that is that is awesome. So where the hell is this thing at? Is it on the other side of this? It's probably on the other side of this door, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's over here, right? Looks climbable. Let's uh, let's do this. And give me this, please. Please and thank you. Yeah, that's two of three. And... It's climbable because it's got a yellow tarp on it. Just so happens to have a yellow tarp on it. Hey, look, you can climb this thing. Why, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Alright, so we get up here, and what does that get me? Uh, oh, it gets me over to that to that door over there. Okie dokie. And through here. And... There's gotta be another... Pronoun source up here. That's exactly the kind of question that never would have entered Will's mind while building this thing. <laughs> Why would he put hey, the controls all the way up there? I think I can get to the reset from here. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, so there's another jumpable thing. And then it looks like there might be a Cronon source up there if I can... At least that's what I'm gathering from the light, the way the light looks. Don't expect to get used to that. Uh, okay. Having trouble getting to that red light up there? Okay, where do I go? Go it's up there? Said than done. No pressure. Just the fate of the world. Well, thank you for that vote of confidence. Uh, yeah. Oh, right there. Okay. I'll take that, thank you. What have we got here? 
over this, and we hit X. Uh, hit X, I mean. Okay, the first red light is now green. Okay, one more to go. So she's unstuck, apparently. All right, so I realized I could fall down onto this walkway here and then try to get over to it from here, I guess. Somehow. And it looks like maybe on that side I can do it. So we'll find out in a minute here. Uh, yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, it looks like it. Oh, yeah, there was a little cloth there telling me I could jump up there. Well, now I know. <laughs> now I know that there was one there. And we gotta get over here. Hit the button. Alright, all lights are green. Alright, this thing, this puppy's spinning up. 88 miles an hour, I say. Alright, and I guess we... But where's the other... Uh, did I miss a Chronon source? No, I think I got all of them. So, X, I guess. Oh, well, don't be so confident. It's actually functional. Okay. Okay, we're doing this. I'll set the date into the console. Okay, set the date to 2010, and she's going to run on through, right? Where is that at? It's over here, right? Uh, no. Where is that? Where do you set the date? Oh, it's right down there. <laughs> I walked right by it. Uh, do you have anything more to say, my dear? Is the city still hunting for me? In full force. There's an entire webpage dedicated to potential Jack Joy sightings. Who I've been filling it in with false leads for fun. Do you want to pitch in? Uh, post that I was spotted in the back of a catering van somewhere. You can do better than that. But okay, I'll let them know. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have you on our side, I guess. Okay. Anyone else have any other words of words of wisdom before I fill in the in the blanks here? Okay. And here we go. July fourth, two thousand ten. Are you ready? No. Are you? No. This is it. There's no turning back. Hey, wait, wait! What did you do? That was the wrong door. You changed the date. Where is she? Where is she? I had no choice. I couldn't let you take the countermeasure. It would put our entire plan at risk. I already called Monarch from the terminal. They're on their way. It's over. What did you do? Fuck! We need the countermeasure to run the lifeboat. I'm gonna follow through with the plan. Tie her up and get as far away from here as you can. I will. You just take care of yourself, Jack. Okay? Explore the swimming hall. All right. We'll do. Let's go on a little walking walkabout. Walking path. Oh, somebody just walked right through me. That was a little freaky. Lights and colors, sounds and symbols. 
And then we emerge back in the past. Your first journey back in time, 2010. This is where our notes get hazy. You know how it ended. Your goal when you arrived was to retrieve the countermeasure. But my goal had to wait. Because I wasn't home.